let's go straight uh, through the presentation. Um, I'm going to talk to you about text categorization with Lucene and Solar, and uh, will be uh, a fair, uh, even part dedicated to what has uh, been implemented in Lucene and how to also leverage that on Solar side. Uh, about myself, uh, yeah, I'm the same as yesterday on the other talk. So, but more or less, there, these are the some projects I'm involved with, and uh, also working as a R&D engineer uh, at Adobe. So, if you want to talk to me about anything of yeah projects or work, uh, just ping me. So, uh, we will see more or less uh, what classification all about, or. or uh, at least some uh, rough introduction to it. And um, why and what's the history behind this uh, small implementation in Lucene? And how it can be leveraged in, in solar. And therefore, wrapping up, seeing yeah, what, what is good and what is still to be done. Or yeah, so uh, generally, what classification is just a very, very, very general is um, we have some algorithm, we have some data, and we want to assign uh, some, some labels given some previous knowledge to new data that comes in. So it's used for yeah, many different tasks. Um, you may imagine like spam filtering or tagging system, uh, auto categorization of uh, new documents in the index. So this kind of things, and yeah, for us, since we're more interested in yeah information retrieval topics, will be uh, used for mainly for text categorization. But the question is, why uh, why this? Uh, we have this in Lucene. Why it could be a good idea? Uh, Lucene is uh, and Solar are good for information retrieval, um, and yeah, do we need that in in Lucene, or why is in that? Yeah, uh, so let me just uh, tell me uh, tell you a, a brief uh, the, the brief history of uh, how it came out, uh, at least for me. So here is the short story. Yeah, um, just Lucina has already a lot of feature and comfort information uh, that that we use for our everyday search and indexing stuff. So why not leveraging that also? Uh, for doing classification, uh, and uh, also because um, for most of our yeah use cases we we already have some index in our installation, and so we just don't need to add anything more to our architecture. And yeah, it's something that could be good, could be useful to us. This is the short story. This is the slightly uh, longer story and uh, how it came out. So uh, I was uh, playing with some uh, natural language processing stuff, um, and I, I needed to implement a naive-based classifier, which is uh, a yeah, probabilistic-based uh, algorithm for classification. And yeah, the, the main requirements for that, it, it was that we, we couldn't just plug in anything different from what we have, uh, which was plain Java or rather Lucene. So the, the first iteration, uh, yeah, and uh, another, another point is that we, are, we were not really interested in yeah, uh, real-time stuff that yeah, I send a document and in one millisecond I, I get the classification done. Um, so we, we could have some, uh, some things, uh, some... some uh, delay in between, so it's, it was good. Uh, the first iteration was just playing in, mem in memory uh, Java stuff, so, but after that, I, yeah, uh, I just wondered, well, why not trying to use Lucene to do this kind of stuff? Let's see if it works. And yeah, the, the, the outcome was that it was that much faster, yeah, you know. Uh, uh, you could argue that my playing Java in memory implementation was crappy, but yeah, the, uh, I hope that's not the case. But uh, the, the, the good fact is that it was uh, uh, fast enough to yeah, give it a try and, and see how, how it worked. So uh, starting from, from, from this uh, assumption, I just realized uh, that Lucene has so many features uh, that 
are stored, you can take advantage for free, more or less. So you, you have, uh, like, like in the previous slides, you have the term vectors, sometimes you have payloads, you have the statistics on the index readers, or uh, even some more statistics if you have access atomic readers, or, or the likes. Uh, and all the, especially all the new uh, uh, API from uh, Lucene 4, uh, can can give a lot lot of more information about uh, how, how the, the index is behaving and what you have inside, um, and and therefore the, the writing the, the classification algorithm was straightforward, really simple, and in many cases that just is uh, that easy because you you don't have anything to the architecture, so your architecture already has uh, Solar or Lucene, and then. You're just using that to provide a, a new service or something new. Uh, so uh, the more uh, um, you know conceptual thing is that uh, to some extent, the Lucene Index can already be thought as a, a kind of model which just need to be queried uh, with the proper with the proper algorithm. So you, uh, for the more uh, kind of researcher-oriented stuff, it's, you, you can think to it about uh, a model which already has some features, and you just need a, a proper way to get advantage of them. And a good thing also it was that it's fast enough. So, good news. So, that originated uh, uh, this classification module, which is uh, just in trunk, and it, there is the uh, issue. Lucene 4345. Um, right now, we're, yeah, we don't have a proper stable API for the classification stuff. It's something very experimental. And uh, we have currently two implementations. The one that I was talking about uh, using Nave Base, and the other one is well, straight, straightly easy using uh, nearest neighbor approach, uh, which uses underneath the already existing more like this stuff in, in Lucene. So it's very, very uh, simple, but uh, still, uh, I'd say, enough powerful to, to give it a try for, yeah, you know, not huge tasks. So uh, here's the uh, classification API, just uh, in order that uh, you, you know that it's not meant to be uh, Stable. I, I don't know if that will be the, the, the final the final API, but it it is what it's like today. So we have uh, a couple of methods uh, on the classifier API: train and assign class. So it's very easy. Uh, at the moment, uh, we we are just using uh, atomic readers on the training on the training side. Uh, that uh, has two two main reasons. Uh, the main reason is that uh, atomic readers. Um, I don't know if you uh, attended Uwe's presentation yesterday, you should have done, because it's really interesting about the differences about using atomic readers. Uh, but uh, one, one, um, one reason is that I would like to encourage using atomic readers rather than uh, a compound and yeah, slow readers for doing stuff. The other, uh, the other more uh, pragmatic reason was that um, uh, atomic readers have uh, a couple of uh, more uh, methods uh, that that can be used to get even more information that can be used as features for your classifier. So uh, these are the, ma the main two reasons. But um, uh, honestly, I'm still unsure if the uh, API, the train API, uh, is going to maintain the atomic reader or the index reader in the final version. So there have been some. Uh, you know, very a, a couple of uh, people asking to me why you're not using index reader because it would be easier for integration, for example, from the solar. We, you, we, but that's uh, that's something that is going to be continued and discussed again. Uh, and after that, so the, the, the atomic reader or index reader, whatever it will be, uh, just holds the uh, data that we are going to use in order to train our classifier. Um, and then we have the text field name, so the, the, uh, the, f the name of the field which we will contain, uh, which is uh, containing in the atomic reader um, the contents of our documents. So just the, the, the content of the documents. 
uh, and a class field name, so the, the name of the field which already has um, uh, which has uh, already a class for the existing document in the index. Uh, and then afterwards an analyzer, which uh, uh, it should, I should recommend, it, it should be in most cases the same uh, analyzer you used for uh, the text field, uh, um, for the text field. Uh, and it will be used also for um, analyzing the new unseen text. And so that's the reason why it should be the same. Um, this is the uh, classification uh, method. So it's a sign class to some text, and you obtain a classification result, which just contains a string, which is the sign class, and uh, and the score, which is the yeah the rank of this classification uh, given by the algorithm. Um, so the text is the unseen text, and yeah, the classification result just contains yeah the result. Straightforward. So this is the API, and which which you you just plug uh, whatever algorithm uh, algorithm you want. It's uh, easily yeah. Uh, you can just plug in whatever you want. Yeah, that's it. And so um, now we are going to see the, the, the two implementation that already exist in there. Yeah, that they are very fairly easy, but yeah, still I hope uh, they can give an idea of yeah what uh, how it could be used. So the the first one is the nearest neighbor classifier. So that that's the general uh, idea of the algorithm. So, um, given some new text or item, uh, I, I search in my knowledge base uh, for the k items that are nearest to the new unseen item, where nearest as yeah maybe is is some some measure that you give to the algorithm is something that can be still pluggable. You you can use whatever measure you want, and um, and then I get the k classes which are signed at my k neighbors, so I will have uh, in this case my uh, uh, top docs, for example, object with k uh, k docs inside, and will have to analyze the the, the k uh, field values for the class field, and then I will just grab the most frequent the most frequent class. So how, how can we do this in Lucene? So the, the, the idea is that uh, we already have that well, you, you should already know that we have the vector space model, uh, which uh, helps a lot in terms of um, the distance between objects, items, or in this case documents in the scene index. Um, and still, we also have this uh, very nice feature called more like this module in in Lucene, which does uh, fair uh, a fair amount of things for this algorithm. Uh, so, given a new document, we, we just use the more like this um, uh, module to create a more like this query, which fil filter out uh, two frequent words. Um, that is because, well, when you want to find the neighbors um, as usual of, of some document as usual, you don't want to take into account f words like articles, punctuations, whatever uh, you have in the uh, in documents. Uh, and so the, the more like this helps you uh, because it extracts the, the, just the more relevant uh, terms. Um, so w that are used, that this query is used for finding the neighbors. Uh, the query is then executed on the atomic reader, returning only the, the first key results. And then the results, as, as I was saying previously, are just browsed in order to find the most frequent class. And that, that is then assigned with a score of class frequency uh, over k. This is uh, straightforward, and but uh, I have to say that uh, from my test is yeah, uh, it, it has some some good outcomes. And the, the good thing is that uh, if the k uh, even if k is big, it, it does scale very pretty well. Um, yeah, I've, I've tested with uh, kind of um, one million documents index, which is not that huge, but still something that yeah can have some uh, value in terms of benchmarking. 
So uh, that is for the first implementation. So now uh, what we are going to see is the uh, naive base implementation, which is slightly more complicated, but nothing uh, really rocket science. It's uh, just the, the idea is that uh, we use probabilities in, 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 in this algorithm. So this, uh, the third bullet uh, line is the formula of the algorithm. So we just uh, calculate for each class uh, the uh, the probability of the d of a document given a class, uh, which is multiplied for the prob probability for each class, and then we select the the class which has the the, the highest probability. Um, the probability of a document given a class is called the likelihood. So, uh, in intuitively, uh, how likely could be that document tagged with that class? That's that's the idea. Um, while the prior is just well uh, the probability of a class, which in yeah in, in our in a simple use case we can just uh, um, calculate as uh, the, the number of items uh, with with that class over the number of items, which is well straightforward but but still uh, useful. So well, but we have some assumption. We we will use some assumption here. Uh, which are um, important w within this algorithm. Um, the first word, the first assumption is the bag of words assumption. So we just treat all our terms as uh, unrelated stuff. So we we just don't think that well. We we just know that uh, this is not true, but the algorithm doesn't treat those uh, each token. Uh, it, it does treat each token as uh, a single token uh, without the context. Um, and the condition and independence. The feature probabilities are independent given a class. These two uh, assumptions uh, help us keep the uh, algorithm uh, fairly straightforward. And obviously, these, these, these assumptions can be overtaken and uh, with, with a proper uh, algorithm, uh, another algorithm which does things in a uh, slightly smarter way. But still, uh, I have to say that uh, we have still uh, good results, well, for uh, fairly good results, even with these assumptions. So uh, how we calculate those, uh, those probabilities? Uh, the prior, yes, the number of documents with class uh, C uh, over the number of docs, which is, yeah, really easy. Uh, while the likelihood is easy to, to calculate uh, also because of the of the bug of words assumption and the other assumption as well. So uh, we just calculate the, the probabilities of each words given a class and multiplicate those, those probabilities. So we just need probabilities of single terms, uh, which uh, this is the formula. I don't know if it's uh, clear enough, but it's the term frequency of the uh, given term in document with class C plus one. The plus one is used uh, to, to get rid of uh, terms that don't appear in the index. Uh, over the number of terms in documents with class C plus the number of documents. That's, yeah, it, that, that more or less the, uh, the formula from the known algorithm ported to Lucene. Um, a couple of, uh, yeah, just one question. Does the bag of words assumption affect the classifier precision? Uh, yes, in theory, because as I was saying, the, um, the, the, uh, the tokens are not independent. The tokens mean uh, F sense in a context. So yeah, when we, we write or say something, uh, we just don't put uh, words uh, randomly <laughs> near each other, so they have some meaning, and the positions are, are have some meaning. But um, uh, not always this is a problem in practice for this probability-based classifier. So uh, depending on your index data, it may or not have an, uh, an important impact. So uh, another, uh, another thing to consider, um, the classifier API makes usage of an atomic reader to get a data for the training. So uh, this, uh, the, the basic thing is that we can use the index we already have 
uh, for our search stuff and use the fields that are in there uh, to, to, to do the classifications, but nothing prevents us to just use a different index, which is uh, um, more strictly um, um, uh, fit with, with some data uh, using specific analyzers for the classification stuff, using uh, some more fine-grained stuff just because we, we want our classification stuff to be more, more precise. Uh, uh, so uh, that's also the, the other. The other reason is that uh, we wa we may not want to hit performance on the uh, on the search and the index stuff. So we may just yeah use a duplicated uh, index. So the, we just have the same index uh, duplicated somewhere else, and we ha we use the um, not it from the queries uh, one to do the classification. Uh, and also, the, uh, the other cool thing is that we, we can just use the, uh, um, the index data, yeah, as I was saying, in a different way. That is another idea where you just can, can use uh, another, the, the index with uh, huge documents for each class. So if you have six class in your, uh, in your uh, domain, you would just have six documents, six big documents, which are the concatenation of the, the, all the documents in, in your knowledge base, and use that with some custom simula similarity. But that's just for mentioning, because it's not a yeah, very good approach, in my opinion. So uh, that's it for the, the very uh, quick overview of the API and the algorithms. Um, but a, a couple of considerations just be before we go to, to the solar side. Uh, bootstrapping stuff, uh, how are your first documents classified? So because we, assu we assume that uh, some of the documents are already classified. Otherwise, our classification wouldn't work because it's using that. It's using that data. Uh, so we, we can just uh, yeah, ask someone to do that while uh, writing the articles or the documents or for some reason, they are already added in the documents because we may crawl it from, yeah, whatever, uh, website or some, some other uh, data source. Or we can just do some automatic uh, classification, which, so, so for example, uh, there we, we just have some services which we pay for, which are used for a classification, but we, we just want to use them uh, uh, to bootstrap our data so that we, cast, we cut our costs and, and use the uh, new classifier which was trained with that data to uh, keep classifying the new documents. So that could be a smart approach to, to cut the costs. Um, okay, in either case, the classifier needs something to be fed with to be effective. Just let's remember that. Um, other, uh, as always the case in uh, yeah, our uh, information retrieval and especially in Lucene, uh, we need to consider tokenizing. How are your content field is tokenized? Uh, white space, uh, does it work for each language? What we do, what we do with German compound words? Um, standard tokenizer, standard Lucene tokenizer, which uses a grammar. Uh, sentence tokeni tokenizer, so that we use sentences instead of uh, tokens. Or what about using engrams? Or what about using shingles, which are engrams but for words? So that, that are uh, different approaches on the tokenization, which are important to be aware of, because they may eat our classifier precision. And filtering. Um, some words may or should be filtered while training and classifying either, or both. Um, often stop words and punctuation. But um, other things that could be useful when training a classifier that we just use some part of speech tagged words. So we just don't want to be used to, to use the classifier uh, for again um, articles or for example punctuation. But uh, we just want to get rid from certain uh, common names or certain verbs or. Or, and, and we just, for example, may use only some named entities uh, which are tagged with some part of speech in our domain to feed the classifier. So that 
that could, could help us a lot. So, uh, as I was saying, row benchmarking, uh, I tried this, both algorithms on kind of one million docs index, which is not that big, but still has some value. Um, naive base is affected by the number of classes because there's, there's lots of iterations on the, on the priors and the, uh, and the classes. Um, while the, neighbor, uh, the um, uh, nearest neighbor is affected by k being large, not as much as the naive base is, is affected by the number of classes. So it's, uh, but also it depends about uh, how many it's the nearest neighbor as on the index. Even if you specify uh, k to yeah 1,000, but the more like this query just returns three documents, then that's it. That's the that's where the um, uh, hit performance uh, happens may happen. So you, you just if you just collect three documents, even if you say I want to analyze my k neighbors, that that's uh, that will not won't affect you. Uh, but um, that's. I don't think that's a measure, but uh, it was just to give you yeah, a fair idea of what it took to me. Uh, more than, not uh, more than a couple of minutes to train, uh, even with great number of classes or, or large key values, which I think is something that is acceptable uh, because we are, we are talking of uh, something that is uh, not scaled just on disk and just running on my laptop. So. Uh, So okay, from uh, Lucin to Solar. So so far we've seen uh, how the uh, very low-level stuff uh, is supposed to work, uh, and, and now we see how we we port that. We we get advantage of that. We can may adv get advantage of that in Solar. Um, one idea is using a specific search service, uh, like the more like this, but classification based. We'll see uh, in a moment what does it mean. Uh, another idea, is, uh, which I think is uh, yeah, the most uh, attractive one, is that while indexing, I want to automatically uh, categorize text. That is something that would be, could be useful in lots of use cases, and uh, at least in my past experience while working with Solar, I had so many uh, yeah, requirements of yeah, doing something uh, uh, while content is being, just, is being ingested. And, but still, we, we don't want to yeah, use some external services which rely on HTTP calls or wh whatsoever, but uh, this is something that uh, would be use useful for. So uh, use case for this classification-based MLT, uh, more like this. So I want to have all the documents that belong to the same category of a new document, not indexed. Um, so for what, uh, of a document that I no, don't know the category of. So uh, that's, that's something that is, yeah, I want just similar documents for some metrics that is called category. That is, that is the, the idea. Uh, and it's something that, yeah, I've seen happening a couple of times. And yeah, that, that I think that would be useful. Uh, it's slightly different from basic, uh, more like this. So uh, since it does not only return the nearest docs, so it just not say I'm doing the more like this query and have all the, the nearest documents which are nearer, uh, nearer to the unseen text just because they, have, uh, they are near because of the vector space model. It's something that is based depending on the classifier, but it's always based on the outcome uh, category or the outcome class. Even if we used the nearest neighbor classifier, which uses more like this underneath, what this service will give us is all the documents which has uh, which have that category. <coughs> so straightforward. Yeah, it's uh, maybe uh, that's not uh, error safe, but just to give you the idea, uh, we we can. Uh, program this classification more like this handler. We just get the params, so we, we get the document that we, we have from the parameters. Uh, we assign the, 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 the class to the documents. We get the assigned class and do the, yeah, just a term query on the index 
with the class field name and the given class. Straightforward, very easy, I'd say, uh, very, also very, very efficient in terms of yeah, complexity or something like that. Uh, and still here, you, you, you should notice that the train stuff doesn't happen uh, on demand. The train stuff does happen, may happen uh, every now and then, or when index searcher gets open, or in a background, whatever. That, but that wouldn't, shouldn't hurt uh, performance. So uh, that's it for this. Uh, uh, more like this stuff, it's yeah, very straightforward, but I, I hope you just grab that it's slightly different from the basic, more like this. Um, so uh, let's move to automatic text categorization. So once, uh, as always, or often happens that once the document reaches solar, uh, we want to do something to it. Um, and in this case, we can use the Lucian classifier to automate assigning of documents category. Uh, and we, the cool thing here is that we can leverage the existing solar plugins or facilities for enhancing the indexing pipeline. And in this case, we are using a, a custom update chain which will be decorated with one or more update request processor. This is the yeah, common API for doing something at indexing time in solar. So we just say, uh, when a document uh, reaches my index just before I write it and persist it, I do a couple of uh, steps. And yeah, I'm interested in this, in this uh, particular case on doing automatic text categorization. That, is, that will be the configuration. Straightforward. Uh, yeah, we have this update request processor saying, uh, the processor class is the categorization update request processor factory. Uh, and then we just use the, yeah, I think this is the 3.6 one, but nevertheless, run update processor factory. Uh, so we categorize and then index. So what we are going to do in the auto uh, automatic text categorization processor, that's the API, we have the process add. So when we add a new document, uh, we do something. Yeah, we, we just get the text of the, of the uh, to be indexed document, which again, we use the classifier to assign the class, and we, de we, we assign the, the class to the given category field. Both the text field and the category field can be configured uh, in the solar config XML. So it's something that is uh, yeah, configurable and pluggable. And yeah, uh, uh, one side note, every now and then, we may need to retrain to get latest stuff in the current index. That's not uh, the case when your index is uh, very large because um, when you just have a couple of, yeah, or tens or 100 or 1,000 new documents, it usually doesn't affect too much the, uh, the classifier uh, behavior. So what can, can, can we do to do more fine-grained control with this automatic categorization stuff? Uh, we just, uh, because we are concerned about not choosing wrong categories, at least. Now, usually, uh, at least in my experience, customers are more concerned on uh, not having something that doesn't work in one, in one time, or only once, that having something that is work 99%. They always find the one, one single use case which doesn't work and you're it. But that was the, my experience in the past, at least. Um, so we, we just may use the score that is returned from our classifier to just get rid of low, uh, low scores um, categories. Um, and also, um, if we already have, because there, there may be cases where we don't have, we, we already have some category with, for some documents and we don't have it for some others, we just this, uh, use this uh, conditional uh, categorization. So wrapping back, uh, uh, simple classifiers with 
no or little effort from the architecture point of view and also from the implementation point of view because as you've seen, the, uh, both the Lucene stuff uh, but especially the Soror stuff is really straightforward. Uh, both the, class the classifiers are uh, available both for Lucene and for Solar, are still reasonable, reasonably uh, fast, which uh, at least in, in, uh, so far, uh, but still a lot more can be done. Um, I was telling you about the, the um, improving uh, the one of the classifiers, uh, allowing to consider the, the context of, of the words, and that could be done using some uh, algorithm uh, called maximum entropy, which uh, you may know because it's already implemented in some other project like uh, Apache Open NLP. Uh, but still, uh, I think it could make sense to have it uh, here as well, just because we don't want to, uh, we may not want in, in some cases to uh, change our architecture, plug something different, and that's, that's it. And thanks. <laughs> Any questions? The, the, the question was is if, uh, yeah, we, we could, well, not, that, not a question, but uh, the idea is that we can just use um, uh, not only one, one single piece of text, one, one uh, single field, uh, but multiple fields to uh, eventually uh, merge them or just use portions of them for training uh, the classifier or different classifier. That, that's something that can be done, uh, I'd say, in an easy way. But yeah, that should require to, to change the API or at least uh, improve it, but I think that would be very well welcome. Yeah, um, the question is, are you planning to extend the, uh, the number of algorithms and why did you select these two algorithms? Yeah, the, the, the answer is the um, naive base was something that I used. Uh, I, I needed, and I needed the, just the naive base, so I, I implemented that myself for my use case. The um, nearest neighbor one, uh, I, I thought it was useful to have it because even if it's not one of the best algorithms, it's still some, something that uh, could have been plugged very easily and that could be useful for user to test and see how a new classifier can be done. That, so that's, that's something that uh, um, I think it's something that adds uh, something to the API. And uh, um, actually, uh, at the moment, as I, I said, uh, I plan to yeah, have a, give it a try to, to implement the max entry, maximum entropy classifier uh, with Lucene. So that's, that's the idea, but if you yeah, want to implement something else, you're welcome. Patches welcome, as always. <laughs> yeah? Uh, just a release question. Um, you said uh, about the Lucene stuff, it's in the current trunk, and uh, is it planned for releasing it with uh, version 4? Okay, thanks.